In today's episode, I'm joined by Brittany Blackman from Breathe Easy Rentals and Sean Kemper from ETI Solutions. And they're going to share their experiences of housekeeping training and the workshops they've been delivering in the Florida Panhandle and Orange Beach, Alabama. I'm also talking about something that's dear to my heart that is so relevant to this conversation, and it's called The Art of Noticing. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer, and as ever, I'm super delighted to be back with you once again. So I'm working with a coach right now, which is really exciting. And although it's early days, I'm already seeing some massive differences in the way that I go through my days. I've become more mindful about what I'm doing throughout the day. So more intentional, more focused, uh, if you like. So here's an example. While I haven't kicked the habit entirely, I no longer reach for the phone the moment I wake up. Instead, I spend some time just almost luxuriating and in gratitude and anticipation of the day to come. And that's making such a huge difference. I'm also exercising more. I'm playing loads of pickleball when I can. I found the Bend app. If you haven't come across a Bend app, I absolutely love it. It's 10 or 15 minutes of stretching and flexibility exercises every morning. And you know, when you're getting to my stage, you need to do that. So the other thing is I'm really noticing things more. Because in my efforts to be more mindful about what's going on around me, I've been listening to a book called The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. It's a really great, it's a, it's a fun, it's a playful book. And it encourages readers to slow down and look at the world about them more carefully. So what it consists of is 131 really simple exercises that are designed to sort of spark creativity enhance your attention and allow you to find joy in everyday life. So this is what Rob Walker says about the book. He said, it's comprised of exercises and provocations meant to help you counter distraction by inspiring you to make the small yet enjoyable effort to rediscover your sense of creativity and wonder. These ideas are meant to shake up the way you see, hear, notice and otherwise experience the world. And I've been doing some of these exercises and I'm really benefiting from it. And I found that by being really present and fully engaged in my surroundings, I'm becoming more attentive and I'm spending way more time on what really matters and stopping frittering time away mindlessly scrolling through social media or looking at TikTok videos. Um, It's actually really helping pare down those types of of activities, which I now realise I was spending a lot of time on. If I had a little bit of time on my hands, I'd be doing that instead of doing something meaningful. And that doesn't mean that, that you have to schedule every minute of the day, but instead you just focus a little bit more on what you're actually doing and what it means to you. I've also discovered bread making. My friends and family are absolutely inundated with my bread making efforts. My freezer is fast filling up as well. So this has all come out of of being more mindful. So the activities that are in the book are meant to enhance your ability to notice details and experience your environment more richly. So while I've been out walking the dog, for example, I've been taking photos of wild mushrooms and flowers that I'd never noticed before. And I've been using the Merlin app to identify different bird songs. If you haven't tried the Merlin app, there's a link in the show notes. Go check it out. It really is just a little bit addictive. So once again, according to Walker, training yourself to notice more, you're going to you become a clearer thinker. 
a better listener and apparently more creative. I haven't really got around to, you know, how I've become more creative, but I'm sure it's going to happen. But the book's designed to help you break out of routine and see the familiar in new and exciting ways. And I'm actually really finding that that is the case. And if you're if you're wondering here, this is all highly relevant to what we do, because the skills that I'm learning from this book, they can be pl- applied to so many different areas of life, you know, from work to personal relationships. For example, just noticing small details in a conversation with a guest or an owner can make you a better communicator and improve their experience with you. Because when we're mindlessly carrying out everyday tasks, it's easy to fall into that routine, that trap, where we're just going through the motions without paying true attention to our surroundings. So whether it's cleaning a property or whether it's checking in a guest or handling a maintenance issue, tasks can become so familiar that we do them mindlessly. But what would happen if everybody in your team just slowed down just a little and truly noticed the details? What if they were trained to see properties that they go through with fresh eyes every single day? In our Thrive training program, we actually talk about the art of noticing. It's about being mindful, fully present in our work. It's about seeing those tiny details that if they're left unattended can just detract from a guest experience. But most importantly, it's about understanding that every member of a property management team has a role in maintaining this this really heightened level of awareness. So that aside, today I am thrilled to have two experts who are making a significant impact in this area, and that's Sean Kemper from ETI Solutions and Brittany Blackman from Breathe Easy Vacation Rentals. And they've been leading the charge with their innovative housekeeping workshops. And they've been teaching property managers and their teams how to master the art of noticing through the art of clean. And their approach has been transforming the way that people are managing properties. The feedback from these workshops has been phenomenal. So in a few moments, we'll be joined by Sean and Brittany to dive deeper into this topic And they will share their insights and their success stories that will help you to implement some of these principles in your own properties. But before I bring them on, I want to ask you to take a moment to think about your current processes. How often do you truly notice the details? How can you and your team be more mindful in all of your daily tasks? Because by embracing the art of noticing, you'll not just improve the way you do business and the cleanliness and maintenance of the properties, for example. You'll enhance the entire guest experience, creating that environment where guests feel truly welcome and cared for. And that's what we want. It's the key to success, isn't it, in our industry? So are you ready for this enlightening conversation with Sean and Brittany? Without further ado, let's head right on over to the interview. So I am super excited to have with me today Brittany Blackman from Breathe Easy Rentals and Sean Kemper from ETI Solutions. Both Brittany and Sean have been on the show before, but it's been a little while, certainly for, for Brittany. So I am so delighted to have them here today. We're going to be talking about a workshop that they ran in Destin and in Orange Beach uh, a couple of months ago, how successful that was and why they feel it's so important that more people attend this type of training. So welcome, both of you. Welcome, first of all, Brittany. Haven't spoken to you for a while, not since the Vacation Rental Women's um, Summit way back when. Seems like ages ago now. So thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you. It's always a pleasure, Heather. It's uh, lovely to have you here. And Sean, we met up a couple of times in uh, Gulf Shores in uh, in the winter. We went out to lunch. Mm-hmm, yep. Twice it was uh, twice. twice it was really great to uh, to have that time with you and uh, so good to see you here again today. So thank you for joining me too. You're so welcome. Good to see you. Definitely enjoyed our time down here. We had we had some fun. We did. We did indeed. And we'll be back there 
Well, January, in fact, we'll be heading back down for another few months. So uh, I can't say I can't wait. I need to get some summer out of the way first, but it will it will come come around, no doubt, really, really quickly. So what we're talking about today is housekeeping, cleaning and the importance of training. And I was so impressed with what you two were doing back in the spring by bringing housekeeping training to the Gulf area. But I want to start out with, you know, what inspired this? What inspired you to do this? I love training and educating. That's kind of what I've always done in my career. I've always kind of done these as far as education on my cleaning chemicals and working with my distributors. But now that I've I've been on the VRHP board for several years now. We used to kind of do those and do some travelings. We would do Outer Banks, Gatlinburg, down here on the coast. And Brittany and I started talking and we're just like, you know, there's a gap here again. These people need this. We're so honed in and strong during COVID because everybody was concerned with cleaning. But now being a couple of years removed, it's just reverted back to before. And it's it's a mess out there. And these folks need some help. Um, and, you know, just educating them on the cleaning processes, understanding some pH, you know, why these products, what do we do with them, why we use the ones we do, and uh, just really giving them some good education and guidance that they need. And Brittany, you, I mean, you run a property management company. So, you know, you're in at the ground floor, you're on what we used to call in England, the coalface. And, you know, I, I see your posts on Facebook because you're very raw when you talk about the experience of of being a property manager. What was it out, out of what you actually do operationally that inspired you to team up with, with Sean? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing for me was being the boots on the ground. When I looked around at the conferences, which I absolutely love going to as many of them as I can, but I noticed that this type of education wasn't there. Uh, we all talk about housekeeping, maintenance, property, you know, pro- what we call property care as being the foundation of a successful vacation rental business. But when you go to these different conferences, it just, the content wasn't there. It's also very difficult when you're trying to send those frontline staff members to those conferences. Let's say that the education was there. Well, you can't send them because who's going to run the company, you know? Um, and so that's where when Sean and I had a conversation at the end of last year and and it was like, this is missing. And how can we bring the frontline education to the people who actually need it, to the people who can't make it to the conferences? And that's honestly how the whole idea got started. Yeah, I, you you make such a great point there, and it's something that we we found out when we were doing the, the, the Thrive Workshop earlier this year that the people who came this was their first experience of real outside training. You know, somebody and they felt so good that they'd been given that time to go and sit in in a room and listen listen to us talk. But it's an investment. They felt, and it was it was an investment in them. And you're absolutely right. You know, company. You, well, you go to the conferences and it's generally the principals and the operations managers and the revenue managers. They're the ones that get to go, not the people who are on that front line. So I think this was such a great opportunity. So where do cleaners currently go to get trained? I mean, that's a you know a, a, a damn good question. You know, most people I talk to are either looking at stuff on Facebook, YouTube, there is no real solid training for them out there. I mean, they're just going to Home Depot and Lowe's sometimes and buying a mop and some chemicals or it's just, yeah, maybe some local janitorial type companies can give them a little bit of guidance and help. But it's 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 a mess out there. We need to we need to help you know build this up and help standardize the industry. I know in, in Ontario, it was and still is incredibly challenging to find anybody that was willing to do cleaning. I mean, and we're very remote, you know, <laughs> you could ask somebody to go and clean a property and it might require a one and a half hour drive to actually get there around the other side of a lake. So wow. it's always been just a, a, a huge challenge. And I always admired the fact that other companies had either in-house cleaning staff or they were there were companies locally that had cleaners that would, you know, the, the contract cleaners that would go out and, and do this. So how does it work for you, Brittany? How does, you know, for your company, how do you get your places cleaned? 
Uh, so we have partnered with a little bit of both. So we have everybody's independent contractors. We do not have any in-house cleaners per se. We have a couple where it's just, you know, a single person or maybe it's a husband, wife team, a best friend team. Uh, and then we do actually have one uh, company now where they started with us and they have grown, you know, and are now successfully adding on other property managers. So it's a little bit of a mixture. Um, what we've learned in the two workshops that we've done so far here in the Panhandle and Alabama coast is that there is not consistency. It, everybody is all over the place. Some people have in-house, some people do outsource, and that is part of the problem in the education um, is, you know, as soon as you outsource, you lose a little bit of that control. And so it's definitely something that even as we continue our our workshops, we're going to tweak uh, because the conversation's different depending on who is in the room. And there's no right or wrong. As you said, you, what resources do you have available? And I know what we've seen here in, here in the Panhandle in the past couple of years is during COVID, everything was busy and cleaners, man, you did whatever you had to to keep them because there was nobody else. Everybody was so busy. Well, now rentals are a bit slower, uh, what I would call the kind of flat line to that, you know, pre-COVID stuff. Um, so now all these cleaners are out of work. They don't have as much business. And so um, I, the reason I bring that up is because now the competition in cleaning is fierce. Now they now the quality of their job truly does matter because now you can go, okay, well, if you're not cleaning well for me, I'm going to go over here to this other person. So I think there's this huge value that these cleaners can invest in themselves and b whether they build a small business or choose to expand, you know, if they get the good education, they can make themselves valuable and build a great business. They have such an abundance of cleaners down here. Like Brittany said, if you're not cutting it, you're not doing a job. There's plenty of people waiting and chomping at the bit to uh, to come in and clean. Yeah, I, I heard from one of the property managers recently that there are you know, the small companies now, a lot more small companies now propping up and people seeing that there is there is potential in actually building a company and making some you know making some money out of doing it really really well yeah so look what Jonathan and Welling Goods doing i mean he's he's making a, a strong push yeah. to handle all that yeah ex exactly so let, let's go on to your the, the workshop the, the workshops that you did can you tell me a little bit more about who you were aiming these at and who act, who you actually got to come to them? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're targeting housekeepers. We, we like some maintenance guys to come in there as well, too, because it's good for them. Um, we we did have some housekeeping managers. I've had a couple of director of ops sit in on this. So we, we, we try to target everybody. I mean, we, we I'm just such an advocate to getting the front of the house, the back of the house, everybody somewhat on the same page and having some understanding. Even if, you know, you're an owner or director of ops or, you know, upper management and, and you have, you know, outside or cleaning contractors, I feel they still should be somewhat educated if they know the floor has some black foot issues. I think these owners and folks need to understand the chemistry and what's going on there, too. So we try to kind of target everybody, but it's it's been more definitely more housekeeping folks coming in. I, I just want to interject there that if anybody wondered what black foot issues are, I will put a link to the last <laughs> episode I did with Sean where he explained it all and I have to say after after that episode Sean I changed my entire way of cleaning I this is my in my own home and I've passed this on to my cleaner who also cleans vacation rentals and she she took so much from from that so your awesome. your training has now is now blossoming up here mm -hmm. in Ontario without you even doing anything <laughs> Dang it! It's, I'm international now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go, Brittany road trip. <laughs> yes. Well, coming this, to Canada. This is this is it. This is not happening anywhere. I mean, you hearing where training is happening uh, ac across the country. I know Dirk Johnson was was doing training. I'm not sure how much of that he's doing right now, but it it it, it appears to me that it's not something that it is that easily accessible. No, it's not. It's not. That's what Brittany and I are trying to do. And as we continue to build steam, we're getting recognized. People are reaching out to us, asking us for guidance and help. 
Um, I actually had lunch with Amy Hynote a couple weeks back, and she's trying to tag on a hospitality day for her dorm. So we're looking at uh, helping with that, too. So it's just what we do. It's educate the industry, standardize things for everybody, give them the sources they need and just trying to, to bring this industry up the best that we can. Yeah, that, that's absolutely awesome. So let, let's go on to the sessions themselves. What did your attendees find the most valuable? Because I loved what you said in the promotional material you did for them. And you said, this is different from the conferences you'd go to, if they ever went to conferences. That is. <laughs> Brittany, what were you yeah. doing that was different? Very true. Um, Again, I don't want to discredit any conference. I feel like it, they each have aided in my networking and success that I personally have had. So I do think there's great value in them. What I will say is going to conferences for the past 10 years, I basically took everything that I was tired of and said, how can we turn it around? And so what that what I mean by that was I was tired of just sitting in the audience for hours on end just kind of being herded like cows, you know, okay, well, next you go here and then you go to this side of the hallway and now go there. Um, it was all just, just normal, like normalized in, in, in that pattern creation. And so, uh, you know, one thing that we really try to bring in is full immersion, fun, laughter. So we tell everybody, you, you can't be the wallflower, you know, that you can do that at the big conferences. You can go sit in the back of the room. You can pace yourself to the side and that's fine. But in our workshops, they're small and you're going to be part of it. And we, we create and foster that safe environment because we don't want make, we don't want to make people feel awkward um, or insecure at all, but we want them to understand you can be part of that conversation. So, you know, what that means to us are our creative ways to, of engagement, um, finding little fun games. We change it up every time. So that way it's not the same thing, but the goal is to get a, get movement, get people up out of their seats, doing things, get them engaged with other people at the table or people they don't know and in the room. And I think that's been one of the biggest takeaways is that there's an educational piece behind the activities that we do where they learn something, but they're having so much fun in it that they don't even realize it until the very end. And that was one of my biz my biggest successes from the Orange Beach was hearing when we asked everybody for their takeaway at the end of the day and hearing them say, oh, we learned about effective communication and how we're not communicating effectively, you know, in our own and I was like, yes, we did it. And people <laughs> weren't bored the whole time. <laughs> yeah, we so definitely have, have fun in these conferences, I mean, our sessions. But, you know, the validation that Brittany and I get is, you know, we, we send out a form afterwards to get some feedback. And, and some of the comments we get, it's just, it's, it's, it's uplifting for us because we are making a difference. People are saying that they need this. They're, they're comfortable opening up. They learn so much. So like Brittany said, you know, you're just putting some guards down. We're having some fun with it. We're giving some good education. We're helping them. You know, they're making some new peers, some friends in, in the room, so somebody they can bounce ideas off, hopefully. And it's just it's bringing these markets together stronger. Yeah, that is brilliant. So just, just give me one example of something that, that you, you do with the group. Brittany? Um, I'm trying to think. So, I mean, the one we did was a, a, a bet. We did a little bed making competition. So that was timed. It was also interesting to see the different ways that people can make a bed. And then we did another one where it was, and I saw this at a Verma conference in a video clip and then another presentation, but it's kind of like the microphone game, but in a visual way. So it was where one person in the very back of the room had to draw a picture and everybody had a piece of paper on their back and you had to draw what the person behind you was drawing on your back on the person in front of you's back. And what you saw when you've got 10, 15 people in a chain doing that is we started with a flower and we ended up with a stick. But it was the communication gap. It, and that's what we talked about was like, did anybody say, hey, what did you just draw on my back? Nobody communicated. Mm -hmm. So you have communication gaps in that. So it's just I always try to find, OK, what is something I want want to teach and talk about? And then how is a fun, creative way that we can get them involved to visually see the breakdown or the education piece in it? Yeah. And I think it's, you know, I've, I've been doing training for 
years, 20, 30 years now, uh, off and on. And it's, it's often those more creative things that you're doing with a group that have the most impact than, you know, the standing up and PowerPointing and um, just just hoping people are just going to make some notes and take something away. So I love that. I love this idea. So what is the future then for these workshops that you're doing? What plans do you have for any upcoming ones? Yeah, we're always talking about it. We were going to try to squeeze one in this summer, you know, maybe Panama City or further down. But, you know, it's, it's tough time. It's crazy. The 100 days of crazy is, is going on. So we decided just to pump the brakes a minute, pick back up in the fall and get these going again. We're talking to some other friends in different markets. We've got some North Carolina. We've got some Texas. So we've got some other markets that people are wanting to bring us into. So Brittany and I are just kind of holding on and continue to network and, and, and see where we could, could hit a, provide our, our services. And of course, Mike and I have been talking to you about perhaps combining our trust, hospitality and uh, responsibility training and environment, vibrant environment with your housekeeping. So that that's something that could be, I'm just teasing this, this could be coming up in September. We just started to talk about it. Mike and I can't stay away from the panhandle, can't stay away from the Gulf Shores, Orange Beach. And I don't think I could wait till sep- uh, till January. So we're thinking of coming down in uh, in September and visiting our what we call our High Five, which are the first companies that are doing the Beta Thrive program. So we thought, ah, oh, we'll go to we'll we'll fly into Pensacola and we'll put on a couple of days of workshops. So for those of you listening, we are in in discussion with Sean and Brittany that uh, that we may be able to bring a full one day workshop which combines the two. As I say, it's just a teaser. We're just throwing these ideas around a bit. But if anybody's interested in this, this is going to be, I think, a really valuable, if it comes off, and I'm not saying it will, if it comes off, it's going to be a really valuable training, I think, that perhaps you could even fly down to, come and have some, you know, come and have a little break in um, in Orange Beach in September, because it is particularly beautiful, isn't it, Sean? It's a lovely time of the year. It, it is. It is. We're starting to see a little bit of a cool down. It's, we're not the 100 degrees and 100 percent humidity. So uh, it, it does get a little prettier. Kids are back in school. The crowds are a little bit less. So it's definitely a beautiful time to come enjoy the, the beaches and good food and the southern hospitality. Yeah, well, Mike's going to actually put a, a link on the show notes to um, just to a form that if you if anybody's out there who might be interested, who might think that this is a good idea to come you know, to send somebody from your team that perhaps wouldn't go to uh, one of the big conferences, but perhaps go to a, a, a more af- affordable location and spend a day with the four of us, then uh, you can fill that form in and and just register your interest. So I think that's that's sort of where we're going. And I, I'm sort of dropping you in it because we haven't we haven't absolutely decided we're doing this yet. <laughs> but uh, it's out know, there now, Heather. Full force. <laughs> just put it out there. Just put it out there. So uh, that that's about it. That's um, I've don't think I've got anything more I need to ask you about this. I think you're doing such a great job with bringing this training out there, and we, you just need. You just need more people to come on in. Just just tell me a little bit. I said I've, I've done with my questions, but I'm not. <laughs> so the cleaners themselves, the people who actually do the job, are you getting them to come to the sessions? We did. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, but we did have in the uh, Miramar Beach, Destin, um, one that we did and Orange Beach, we did have a couple show up. It does seem and I don't know if it's just because of our main connections between Sean and I It does seem like more of the um, property managers are the ones showing up. So we love that, too. Um, again, I think I referenced this earlier. You know, we've learned that there is a disconnect even between property managers and their 1099, you know, team members. So, you mm-hmm. know, to us, it's like if we can I almost imagine this of like planting the seed, like if you plant the seed and then the people can come and I, whether they're a cleaner or their property manager, but they realize that this is um 
it's short, it's affordable, it's quality content that helps them become better. Then when we bring more of these in nearby markets, they're going to be like, you know what? We went, we had such a great time. The content is similar, but changing, evolving. We've got to go to it. We have to invite our friends, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's our biggest goal. We didn't expect, and we didn't want our first event to be a hundred people in a sold out room. Um, We're very, you know, specific in, and, and what our goal is, and we want to keep it small, and we we just want to start planting the seeds and it it grow in that organic way. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well said. Well said. Okay. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for for, for joining me. It's always such fun to meet with with you, Brittany. You you know you're you're just such a star in this in this industry, and oh, you know you. I. Always look out for your posts um, on LinkedIn and on Facebook because they're raw, they're honest, they're funny, and really tell the story. You could, I mean, you, I often say to people, you could write a book. You definitely should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. You know, that, that's the thing. I remember saying that it just you spawned something in my brain when we were at the Orange Beach event and we had a fun little game where it was toilet toss and we had these little uh, little poos, squishy poos that we got from Amazon and we made it fun and we said, hey, this is the only time you get to sling poo and you don't <laughs> even have to wear gloves to do it. But, right. you know, that's the thing is like we I try to bring in what I know from the hands on ground. Sean brings in his education piece of it. And we do exactly that. We're not there painting a picture that this is perfect, that you're going to get into this industry and you're going to make a million dollars. And we don't sell that. Um, It's a fun industry. It is so absolutely amazing to do what we do, but we bring the rawness in into it um and so i just i just wanted to to throw that out there that that's something that's very important to both sean and i let's talk about the dirty and and then let's talk about the clean yeah oh that that's lovely i mean these people are in the trenches day in and day out i mean you know let them have some fun give them some education you know take kick your feet up a little bit talk to some friends meet some new people and yeah. yeah it's always about having a good experience well that uh, that that is amazing and i wish you all the good fortune for for whatever you do going forwards and hopefully some of that is with us so thank you both for joining me and uh, hopefully we'll see you in september yeah well thank Yay. you for thinking of us thank you heather Thank you so much, Brittany Blackman and Sean Kemper, two of my most favourite people. Love spending time with them. And as we mentioned, there is the potential, the possibility that we will be spending more time with them when we head down to Orange Beach in September. And I believe the dates are something around the 16th to the 18th of September. We are looking to run a full day workshop in Orange Beach and where we want to introduce the Thrive Principles in in a half day. And those are the principles of trust, responsibility, and hospitality in a vibrant environment. And then in the second half of the day, Brittany and Sean will present their housekeeping workshop. So it's like, it's it's a bundle, I guess. It's It's a training bundle. And this I believe, Mike and I believe, Mike and I, and hopefully Sean and Brittany believe, is something that will appeal to housekeeping teams, cleaning teams, maintenance people, or anybody in the operational level of a property management company. It's not something that you're going to find at a conference and as as Brittany explained, you know, you're not likely to send these uh, these staff members to a conference because there'll be so much going on that perhaps aren't relevant to them. So to enable them to come to a whole day event that is focused on them, that is focused on helping them to appreciate the real foundations of the business, why they're doing what they're doing and what their contribution means to the entire success of the business. It's going to be beneficial not only to them, but to everyone within the team. So as we mentioned, we're still in the planning stages. So this is really just a teaser for you to think about whether you'd be interested 
in coming to attend this event. And if you go to the details on the show notes, Mike is going to put a link into a contact form where you can just register your interest. It's not obligating you to anything. It will just mean that if it's something that is of interest to you and we decide that we're actually going to go ahead and do it, then we'll send you some information. That was it. That's it. All you need to do is uh, is put your name and your email address and we will send you the information when we we have it. But I think it would be really valuable and just combining more sort of the theory of what it means to be a contributor to this industry, regardless of what position you're in, with the actual practical applications of of the housekeeping and cleaning side of it. So, uh, yeah, that's that's all I need to say, really, right now. Let us know if you're interested. We will be letting you know in a very short time. If, if we're going to do this, we want to nail it down pretty quick. So, looking forward to hearing from you. This is really exciting. Um, it's it's something that's that's really new. Um, we would be just so excited to partner up with Brittany and Sean to do this. And I think it'd be really valuable. That's it. I think I'll stop talking about it now, as you can tell. This is, I'm, I'm finding this really quite exciting to think about. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed that conversation. I hope you enjoyed thinking about the art of noticing that I was talking about in the uh, intro there. There is a link to Rob Walker's book, The Art of Noticing. There's another couple of links in there that uh, that you may find interesting. A uh, link to our Thrive Training Programme if you're interested in a discovery call. Once again, entirely no obligation. Also to let you know that I'm going to be talking more about this coaching experience I am having because it's becoming so valuable to me that you know I want to share how important this is for anybody in the industry to have that opportunity to be coached to this is not it's not consultancy you know I'm not getting information on how to run my training courses or anything like that but it's more it's a, it's on a very personal level talking to uh, Rachel Alde from Abode luxury rentals last week. Rachel has a coach. She finds that hugely valuable. Um, Matt Landau talks a lot about his coach as well and, and the transformation that has happened to his life since he began his coaching journey. So I'll be talking a little bit more about coaching as uh, as we go through the next few weeks. I'll be sharing my journey and telling you about some opportunities that I'm going to have for you as well. So that's it for this week. Uh, I am, as always, so delighted to have had this opportunity to be with you and I'll look forward to being with you next week. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.